How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the My Player Career Mode. As promised, we have the Confed Cup coming up for you today. Now, this one is going to be a semi-warm-up for the upcoming World Cup that we're likely to play with this My Player Career Mode. As you know, my plan for this upcoming season is to sim it. Then hopefully Ben will be picked for that World Cup and we'll end off the series by playing in England's World Cup in 2026. Where hopefully we'll see England go on to win it. But between now and then... We did have this opportunity to play in the Confed Cup. Now, I basically asked you guys what it was going to do, but deep down, I probably was going to play it anyways. So, luckily, if you wanted to see it as well. So, uh, yeah, today's video, we have the full Confed Cup for you all to enjoy. The group, as you saw, is a difficult one. We play Germany first, then Brazil, and then we take on uh, Australia. So, it's not an easy group. And uh, the, uh, the group stage itself... Didn't get off to the best of starts against the Germans because inside 21 minutes we'd given away the first chance and conceded the first goal. A mistake at the back from England setting up Timo Werner and he made no mistake with the finish in order to put the Germans 1-0 in front. I mean look at this, like what is going on? You just got to clear your line, son, not pass it straight to them. It's actually Eric Dyer as well, the skipper, who makes the mistake. And uh, it's Jack Butland who can do nothing about it. So Timo Werner's 22nd minute goal put the Germans in front and left England chasing the game here in what was only the first group stage game of the group itself. And they did actually create a chance. Delhi Ali going close here, followed up with a Raheem Sterling effort, which then was blocked. And unfortunately, England didn't find their equaliser. But just before the stroke of half-time, a 1-2 between Ali and Ben. Sent Ben in down the right-hand side. The Germans were trying to show him onto his right foot. Of course, the weaker right foot. But in the end, they did it. They allowed him a little bit too much time and space. And he picked one out to the bottom corner. So he got England back on level terms. And we were just about to go into the half-time whistle. What a time to score if you're trying to get yourself in front in the game. And that might be the case here. The Germans were made to pay for their lack of uh, conviction defensively. Although, they did have moments in the game themselves. So, 1-1, uh, nothing was set in stone. Or so I thought, until we got to the 90th minute and found that that was the end of the game. So, all in all, a pretty respectable result for the first game of the group stage. So, straight out of that, we then went into the second one where we faced Brazil. Brazil had won their opening game against Australia, so they topped the group. Of course, Germany and England had got a point themselves, so they were second and third. And it was all to play for up in the air. And it just so happens that this game was not good at all. There was only really one chance in this, and it should have been scored. I don't know what happened. Ben got through. I can only assume that he lost his call. He lost his head right when he needed it the most. Because right-footed, we know he's his weaker side, but you don't expect to see that from him. And I'm not even joking. That was the only chance of the game. Literally the only chance of the game. Like, you know when you go into the highlights bit afterwards, after the game's completely finished? Yeah, that was the only one that it showed in there. So, very, very poor performance from both sets of teams offensively, but maybe the defence was what made up for it. So after that, it left England in danger of not qualifying. Two draws from their opening two games against Brazil and Germany. And uh, if it stays like this, they won't be through to the next round of the Confed Cup. But the only thing they have to fall back on is that Brazil are playing Germany. So if they beat Australia by two goals or more here, a draw in that game will still send England through the group on goal difference anyway. Alternatively, if one of them lose, England can still go through that way as well. So we'll see what's going to happen when England took on the Socceroos in the final group stage game. They'd already pretty much known that they were going out of the competition at this stage, the Confed Cup for Australia. It's more just about playing for pride, but the three at the back certainly doesn't help. When you take it on England who have the attacking force that they do. It only took five minutes for the first chance to present itself. A really nice move, actually, finding its way towards the edge of the area. And Ben made no mistake with the finish, putting England 1-0 in front. That meant that even a draw between Germany and Brazil would make it exactly the same goal difference for Germany and England. So one more goal here for England, and if they don't concede... They'll be through no matter the outcome in the other game. So it's pretty much all in their hands, as you can see. Lovely finish in off the post. Couldn't really get it much sweeter into that top corner. And then we see Ben's celebration. Um, yeah, I did change it. I, I was meaning to change it a while ago because we've had this celebration for quite a while. But the earliest, uh, you know, I, I forgot to actually change it pretty much. So when Ben got in the second time inside 12 minutes and found a second goal, We'd only played 12 minutes of this game and already England's job was pretty much becoming complete. Everything was going rosy. Celebrated by hypnotising the rest of his team in order to play well enough to be able to hold on to this 2-0 lead. And England had got their job done. 
So this now means that irrelevant of the other result in the group stage, England are going through at least in second place. That's the least they're going to get, of course, depending on how Brazil and Germany would play. Because after this, England would be on five. And if Germany and Brazil drew, they would also be on five. So it would come down to goal difference itself. But luckily for England, this result didn't really matter because uh, Germany did actually go on to beat Brazil in their game, meaning that Germany got out the group as group winners and England would go through in second place, provided they could hold on to this one here. And uh, it got even better for them inside the 20th minute, a corner from Australia, completely counteract it. And uh, in the end, went up the other end. And uh, Delhi Ali was the man to put England 3-0 in front. He was looking for the hat-trick goal, Ben. It would have been one of the quickest hat-tricks of his career so far. 20 minutes, very nearly found it as well in England colours. But sadly, a good save. There was uh, Delhi on hand to put it home to make the score 3-0. He did have a chance, though, for his hat-trick later on in the game in the second half. Got sent through by Ali. A really nice ball, actually. Overrun it slightly, though. Tried to, uh, I guess, make do with that. Trying to chip the keeper and, unfortunately, could only find the crossbar. So, that ended off this game. It sent England through in second place because, as I mentioned, Germany beating Brazil put them through in first. And for the rest of the video, we'll be going to a live com to watch the semi-finals of this one up against France because that's the team that England got drawn against. There is confirmation. England making it through in second place. Brazil sadly out of the competition for them. But enjoy the rest of this episode then, guys. Commentary against France is going to be live, as I mentioned. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in a few seconds for that live game. So here we are then. Semi-finals of the Confed Cup for you all. And at this point, we are going to be going to the live commentary. So... Semi-finals have been drawn against France. The other one was uh, Germany versus Spain. And, of course, whoever wins this game will face Spain in that final to come. But, um, as I mentioned, you know, probably earlier parts of this episode, it's a nice warm-up for the World Cup that's going to be following. You know, this, this I guess, Confed Cup, because the likelihood is we're going to see the entirety of this season get to that World Cup, play it, and uh, try and get England another World Cup victory if we can do that. So... That's probably going to be the plan from here on out. But without further ado, let's get into this game against France. See what kind of result we are going to be achieving here. A win will send us through to that final against Spain. Of course, defeat sends us out of the competition. We very nearly didn't get to this stage either, with the group stage being the way it was. The double draws against uh, Brazil and then uh, Germany. Oh, sorry, the other way around. And then beating Australia right at the end, luckily, was enough to get us through the group. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that's going to be enough. And of course, Germany, who topped the group, they're out, so it will be Spain for whoever wins here today. And I think looking at this game, it's probably going to be the tale of two players. Kylian Mbappe for France is certainly their danger man. And then, of course, for the other side, the English. We've seen what Ben can do, but also Harry Kane starts today. Raheem Sterling's in the side. There's a few English players which definitely can cause problems. Likewise for France, though, but it's probably going to be Ben and Kylian Mbappe, the two standout ones from this one. We'll check out the teams as they come up. In just a moment's time, I've seen Lamar there, Varane still playing, and Titi still there for France. So, very good, well-rounded squad here. Lafont starts in goal. The back four is Benjamin Mendy alongside Varane and Titi. Their midfield four is Lamar, Bakayoko, Komen, and Toussaint in there. Of course, I'm not sure who their right back is or who their cam is, but we know all about the man up top, Kylian Mbappe. At this point, is the world's best or one of, if you don't count Ben as the best in the world. Then, uh, you know, we're looking at this team and thinking there's a certain worry about it. But for England, they've gone with this team. Butland, Cessny on left back, Chambers and Dyer at the back, Sterling, that's, uh, you know, at right back, not Raheem Sterling, the other Sterling. And uh, Raheem does start on right wing, but I'm a little bit worried with Ward Prowse and Tuanzebe because fitness wise, both of those guys are not ideal for this one. But the game's about to get underway, and we'll see who's going to win this one. Who will be advancing through to the Confed Cup final? If England buy out at this stage, I can't really say I'll be disappointed because it's not what we were looking to. I didn't even know we had a Confed Cup coming up, to be honest. Um, and I did say to you guys I'd play it. So that's a nice warm-up for the upcoming World Cup, I guess you can say. And that's where we're more focused right now. But we'll still see if we can better this France side and reach this final. Nice ball through already for France as they look for an attack. Kingsley Coma down the right. Ben's teammate at Arsenal. We know all about him. The first chance does go the way of France, but it's an easy save in the end for, uh, for Jack Butland in between the sticks of England. Harry Kane looking to win that header. Isn't able to do so. And the, uh, the first seven minutes here have belonged to France. One chance already. How many more are they going to create? Mbappe on the ball now. First real touch he's had the entire game. And he cuts inside. One back by Chambers, but it comes back to Mbappe! And it should have been France 1, England 0. Mbappe probably won't get a better chance than that this game. 
completely unmarked, gets in. He lashes at it a bit too much, I think. It's, it's a quick effort from him, first time. Should he have taken a touch? I don't know, but that's early warning signs, and it's a let off for England inside 10 minutes. Now England finally get a touch of the ball inside 20 minutes. Ben struggled to get on it a little bit in this first half. And we are about to, uh, you know, approach that half time of first half for Sterling now. Pushed off the ball there by that, and, uh, as it Benjamin Mendy at the back, and nothing given from the referee, even though Benjamin Mendy's uh, attempted tackle, I would say, was a bit unorthodox. She simply pushed him. Ben looking to win that back and will win it back for England. Now they need to create something with it. But look at this, right? He's got the ball. There's no movement in front of him. No pass on. Plays it backwards and now comes forward himself. Harry Kane is the outlet. He gives it to Harry Kane in towards Sterling. Trying to take on Mendy again. Gets it in towards the box. Ben's there. It has to be cleared by Umtiti. Not really seen a definitive England chance yet. But that's the first time they've been in and around France's penalty area. Ben going for the shot. Oh, come on, man. Stuff like that annoys me about this game. As they will win it back about Ben. And uh, lays it backwards, but not really much going on. It's early cross attempted in Ben's header. Oh, it's England 1, France 0. It's only his fifth headed goal of this entire series. But he's given them the lead. I need to change that celebration as well. Oh my goodness me. I did not expect that. The cross was inch perfect. Who's he against? Is it Umtiti? It is. And the, uh, the Barca man really has got to do better there. We've seen that Ben obviously isn't what you'd call an aerial threat, but he gets his fifth headed goal of the series and what a moment and what a time to get it. England one, France nil, and they're on the score sheet for the first time. They're on the stroke of half time. England come forward again, Sterling, lovely play. Harry Kane flicks it towards Ben. Ben looks towards the middle for Rashford. It wasn't a great delivery in towards the box and that was the problem as it comes back towards Ben again. Looks for the volley. It's actually gonna come keep bouncing back for him and he's hit the crossbar. Oh, he could have won it for England right on the stroke of half time. So close to the second goal here. The ball just kept bouncing back kindly for him, but he was unable to find that top corner. Instead, the crossbar is what stops him. France nil, England won at the break. It was ever so close to being two, but for now, France still have a chance. And we always, you know, like coming up against teammates, but for today... They're enemies, and the enemies haven't really been able to do much. And Mbappe's ball through. This might be the first chance. What a tackle that is. Callum Chambers has just pulled off a sensational tackle. Stops what could have been a goal. And England breathe. Offside flag raised against Harry Kane. Two more minutes here for France to find an equaliser. They're sending a whole bunch of players up the pitch now, which is leaving them slightly exposed at the back when stuff like this happens. But luckily, the port steps in very well indeed. You can see just how far this French line have pressed. Ben, if he gets sent the ball, is completely through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Not really sure where Umtiti's going here. He's running back in towards danger. If he loses it towards Ben like that, I'm not so sure that was a free kick, ref. I think Umtiti ran that into an area where he wasn't getting out and looked for that foul. The referee, though, does give the free kick. Any moment now, he should also end off the game, and it should be England through to the Confed Cup final. There is the full-time whistle. England will sp play Spain... In the Confed Cup final, who will come out victorious? Another look at the header, which actually won the game for England. Ball in, and Ben's header. We haven't seen him do that too often, but that was a sensational header. And you can't really say anything else other than that. He made his mark on the game. Sadly, Kylian Mbappe did not. And that is the way it's finished. A goal to nil. Spain await in the final. Who would you guys say is the more likely to win? Seems a little bit unfair, this, because the final is being held at the Santiago Bernabeu. So, yeah, uh, Spain are getting to play at, uh, at the Real Madrid's ground. So, not really sure how that's really fair. I just kind of came out and back in to see if it changes. It doesn't. So, it is going to be held here at the Santiago Bernabeu. So, every chance that maybe this is going to be an interesting game here today. I was looking to see if I could change that because it should be on neutral side already, but I can't actually change it. So it is going to be that ground. Let's jump into the game and uh, maybe see who will be the early indication for potentially next year's World Cup. You know, odds on favourites. Who's going to be more likely? Spain, England, France, Germany getting through. Brazil also looked decent in the group stage until they were knocked out after losing to Germany. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. So a massive night then for both sets of players. 
Because although it is only the Confed Cup, it is still a cup final at the end of the day. And I'm sure there's going to be thousands upon thousands of fans in that ground wanting England to win. Alongside Spain as well. There's probably going to be more Spanish with it being in Spain. We'll check out and see if we can see any of the England fans over there. Of course, there's going to be millions watching the game itself. I do see like a large part of the England flags and such. But I don't know whether or not that's just like put there as to whether or not they're actually England fans. I guess we'll see if, uh, if the boys score who celebrates. But that is the trophy on offer today, as you know. And we'll see who's going to come out on top. There's equally as many Spain flags as well out there today. So it's not going to be an easy game for either of the two teams. Spain with the argument, you know, home advantage. Could you say that they have more pressure on them? Possibly. But even so, you know, England will feel the pressure as well. So let's see what Spain's team looks like. So as the two sets of players are shaking hands, any moment now we'll get the pop-up as the two teams. Seen Bellerin, I've seen Sol, I've seen De Gea. I've seen some really quality Spain players. Grimaldo's there, I think, as well. So this is a really strong Spain side. Possibly slightly stronger than that that England are playing. You'll see the England team as well. So first up, it is the Spain lineup. So it is De Gea in goal. Alongside that is a back four of Bellerin, Llorente, Grimaldo. Uh, I'm not sure who Blanco Vega is. A midfield five of Garrido, Caballos, Sol, Asensio, and De La Feu and Sandro up front. I mean... Any team with Asensio in is going to be good. Caballos is there as well. A solid choice at centre midfield. Seoul as well. So, yeah, really good team from Spain. For England, though, that's their lineup. Butland, Alexander Arnold holding. He's actually there. Eric Dyer, captains aside. Rico Henry at left back. Ward Prowse and Tuanzebe hold their midfield spots. Rashford, Sterling, Ben, of course, as the midfield three. And then Harry Kane up top on his own. So, no place for Dujon Sterling after that assist for Ben's goal or the only goal of that game against France. But the game is about to get underway here at the Santiago Bernabeu. And we'll see who's going to come out on top. Will it be Spain or will it be England? Let's find out. Ward Prowse is down off the ball. He's having an argument with the referee there saying to watch the Spain player. But nothing has been seen by the ref because he hasn't penalised them or anything. I wonder what that was which led to that. Nevertheless, here comes Spain down the left. Grimaldo. Really good area. It's a cross in. It's free for Rodrigo. And that's an important save by Jack Butland. Oh, my goodness me. My heart sank for a moment. Why is Ben getting booked here? I'm not sure what this booking's for. The referee has clearly seen something that we haven't. Uh, well, I mean, it's late, but I wouldn't have said it's really a booking. We're only 16 minutes into the game. Ben's now going to have to watch himself for the remaining 70-odd uh, minutes of this one. But what a save by Jack Butler. And that was an important moment because if they'd have scored there, England would have to chase the game completely. Here come England now on the counter-attack. Harry Kane's down the right. He's still on side as well as Ben's found him. Making the run towards the middle. Harry Kane put the cross in. It's going to be blocked behind. It's an England corner. Wait, what? It's not even an England corner. It's gone out off of Harry Kane. It's a Spain goal kick. Referee's already having a nightmare. We're approaching the halftime whistle here. And at the moment, no real clear-cut chance for England. There was that one for Spain, which was well saved by Butland. But this might be it now as Rashford's found down the left. By Ben, the pace of England beginning to show. He's in towards the box. He's Ben. Got Harry Kane, the man over instead. Goes to Sterling. Oh, it's Raheem Sterling. You've got to do better. Oh, that's what I mean about England. They broke quickly, but then didn't really pick the right pass. I don't think Rashford should have laid it back into Ben as soon as he did. And then Ben's cross wasn't really where he wanted it. I was thinking he might have gone to Harry Kane instead. Went all the way over to Sterling, who completely fuffed his lines. And so at half time, it remains nil nil here. England with a couple more chances, but Spain with definitely the more clear-cut one. Free kick to Spain in a really, really good area. Five more minutes to go. Whipped in with pace. Cleared away. Ben should clear that, and he does. Harry Kane up towards Rashford. Ben sending him away down the left-hand side. He's been past the ball. Bellerin, though. Why? I was, I was holding the analog stick back to run to the ball, but the game just didn't register it. It seemed to do the same thing when your player's running to a ball that's already going out of play. And then it just doesn't actually react. So I was trying to turn back because I knew that B wasn't going to beat Bellerin for pace. Just didn't allow me to do that. Ball whipped in by Spain. It looks like this might go to extra time unless they have something else to say. But Butlin will get that into his hands. I don't know what that was between uh, Ben and Bear in there. Uh, and that's the full time whistle. So it will be extra time and penalties to sort this one out. In fact, does this just go straight to penalties? No, it will be extra time. Okay. So 30 more minutes, and then we could be looking at a penalty shootout for this. I mean, penalties look like it's not really going to be a thing because both teams are on all our attack. So there will be a chance. 
but can they take it, whoever gets it? That's the question raised now. Alcesa off the bench for Spain. Alongside that, I think Tammy Abraham's come on for England as well. So there's changes in the attack in front as Ben carries this forward, looking for an outlet pass. He's got a man, it's Harry Kane towards Tammy Abraham. Goes back in towards him, Abraham. Towards Harry Kane, Kane, Abraham. Why, 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 why? Harry Kane's in, he scores! England won, it's actually not even Harry Kane, it's Ward Prowse, what am I talking about? I saw the 16 and I thought it read 10. I'm a mug, but James Ward Prowse has scored the opening goal of this Confed Cup final. I don't know why I mistook, mistook for 16 for number 10. It's actually not even Ward Prowse, it's Rob Holding. Oh, I've got it completely wrong, haven't I? Anyways, Rob Holding of all the people is the man to give us the lead. In that case, is Ward Prowse still on the pitch? And if so, what number is he wearing? He is. I thought Ward Prowse was 16. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know why Rob holding 16. But anyways, Spain nil, England one. I may have got the score wrong, not once, not twice, but then on the third time I was able to actually get it correct. And in which case, England have the lead. They need to hold on to it though. And that's very lucky from Ben as he still keeps hold of the ball. Driving forward, waiting for a run. There's no real run coming in yet. Apart from that from Sterling. Oh, the ball was nearly inch perfect. Wait, is he offside? Oh, okay, never mind. Four more minutes left of this game. Hoisted up by David De Gea. One in the air by Spain as they come forward again. England onto the defensive unit side. Gerard Delefeu up a long way. One by two and Zebe. Needs to be cleared away by England though. Nothing silly here. And at the moment, they've done pretty well to actually get out. And they might even have a chance at this as Ben will feed Sterling. It's actually going to go through, not to Raheem Sterling. Instead, it's gone all the way through. England with a massive chance now. Score! Got to be 2-0 England. That's the game. They have won the Confed Cup. A lovely move right at the depth of this one. And they have found the second goal. Uh, there was so much involved in this move and this, in this play that I'm not even sure who it is who's got the final touch on this one. All I know is that it was a great move and they've deserved it. I think it might be Tammy Abraham is the man who's put that ball in the back of the net. But there is a lot, as I said, of players who are involved in it. It is Tammy Abraham. So, England 2, Spain 0. That should be it. And they should be Confed Cup winners. There it is. Obviously, the boys will celebrate, but they know that this is only the beginning because we do have to think about the World Cup now. And you can see what it means. Although they are realising that what they've done, they are still remaining focused on what's to come. So here we go then, time to lift the trophy. It will be Eric Dyer doing the, uh, the goods. And as you can see, here he is about to do it. It's not much of a presentation because, of course, as I mentioned, it's not a massive competition. I don't understand why it does this, right? Sometimes the game glitches out. Like, technically speaking, he's supposed to be lifting this, uh, this cup in the air right now. And he's not, is he? He's holding it down. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the stuff is going on. It looks like he's just having one prolonged, like, wait for it, wait for it. I mean, uh, yeah, anyways. So, England winning the Confed Cup, nice way to get some warm-up for some internationals, hopefully in the next episode, of course. If I do sim the season and I'm not picked for the World Cup, I might have to just play a few games off-camera here and there to make sure that Ben is still going to get picked for it. But that'll probably be off-camera, as I said, and uh, I don't want to play a full season out again. My last ambition was to win the, uh, the Premier League with Arsenal, and that's what we did. So, for now... That's going to be the end of today's episode. If you did enjoy it, I'd appreciate a like rating. As I always say, thank you so much for all of your support on the channel. I really appreciate that as well. You guys are insane for all you do for me and such. Ben got actually the golden boot of the Confed Cup. Not surprising. He is a sound player. If you are new around here and like what you see, the subscribe button is down below. You can click that and follow me on the channel. Alongside that is a notification bell. If you click that, you should never miss an upload because you'll be sent a notification every time a video goes live. But for now, guys, that's it for me for today. And I'll see you all again for, hopefully, the World Cup with England in 2026 very, very soon. Stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss it. Adios.